So this is the beam bending problem I want to analyze in SOLIDWORKS. It's a cantilevered beam, 5 meters long, and it has a distributed load, a triangular distributed load, that reaches a peak of 3 newtons per meter in the middle of the beam. And these are the shear and the bending moment diagrams that you could draw by hand, but I'll also show you how to do these in SOLIDWORKS. It's usually easiest to, to uh, start sketching these on the right plane just to get the coordinates, the x-axis, uh, coming out at you. And the shape for our purposes doesn't really matter. I'll do a uh, square cross-sectional profile and I'll extrude this out. We're looking for a 5 meter length on the beam, so we'll extrude it out blind uh, 5 meters. And for our purposes the material really doesn't matter, so I'll make this uh, alloy steel. Now that you've made the beam go, we'll make a new static simulation. And right, right here where it says part, right click, go treat as beam, and it will also, this joint group will appear. Right click, go edit, and now click, click uh, the item, the beam that we're interested in, click the beam itself, and now go calculate, and it automatically finds what are called joints at either location. And these are locations where you can add forces and moments at the uh, different parts of the beam. And if you had two beams touching one another, it's smart enough to calculate a joint uh, right in the middle of the beam. For example, if you had a piece on the left and the right where they touch, it identifies the location of another joint. And if you want, click display neutral axis. We could see that going down the center of the beam. So we'll, let's fix the left side of the beam. I'll just go fix geometry. And we want it completely fixed, so we'll use this joint. Click on this particular joint, click OK. And what these, these arrows show me is that it's preventing translation in the X and the Y and the Z directions, but moreover it's also showing me these little thumbtack heads which represent moments and a fixture says that it will resist any sort of movement, any sort of rotation around the X, Y, and Z axis, and with a cantilevered beam the fixed support will produce a moment to prevent any translation there. So we got the fixture right. If I go back to the front view, y-axis vertical, x-axis acting to the right, now all we really need to do is apply a distributed load uh, to the bottom of the face. So right-click, external loads, we'll make a force, and we'll work on the beam. And a plane for direction, let's do the top plane, and we'll apply, or actually, let's do... Instead of the top face, let's use the bottom face of this beam. I'm pushing the up axis, uh, the up and down buttons to rotate about the horizontal, just so I can get a position for the bottom of it to uh, select the bottom of the beam. So I'm going to rotate it upwards 90 degrees. Here's the bottom of the, green, the plane going into it. I'll click there instead, face one. It really shouldn't make uh, much of a difference. But let's go under units, let's go per unit length. And the direction I want to be normal to the plane, so it'll act upward on the beam. Click non-uniform distribution. Because this is a triangular distribution for this problem, you can click a few different buttons. And up here, be sure to select the beam itself so we can get the arrows to appear. So I can click a few different buttons for a total load distribution. And here's a triangular load, parabolic, a different shape. Let's go click down here and we'll go table driven. I've had better luck using table dri driven distributions than uh, the for example, the triangular is all we really want, and it looks like that ought to work, a triangular shape, but it doesn't, it seems to be glitchy for me. So I go table driven load distribution, and we want three points. The first point, there'll be a zero load here. At the middle of it, it'll be three newtons per meter, and then zero off to the, at the very right. So I'm going to right click here and go insert row, do distance. The beam length, it'll tell you, is 5 meters. The first one we want, at a distance of 0, the force, this would be our variable W, newtons per meter is 0. The middle of the beam, we'll say 2.5 meters, has a distributed load of 3 newtons per meter. And now at the other side of the beam, at 5 meters, it has a force P unit length of 0. So that gives us a triangular distribution that way. If I wanted to, I could go insert row. I could do something else maybe at 4, let's say it jumped up to 6 or something like that. So I can make, um, we can make it even bigger. We'll go 10. And what I can do is construct now uh, an arbitrary shape. I've got four points to the left, here, here, and here with these different variables. So there's a lot of things that you can do. But let's delete this row. 
and I've set that back to 3 at the midpoint, so I've got it there. If I wanted to, I could flip the origin, but it doesn't matter since it's symmetric. So we'll click up OK up here, and now I'll right-click here, Create Mesh. It does this relatively quickly because it's a, a one-dimensional mesh only along the x-axis. And if I want to even, I can go Apply Mesh Control. These run really quickly, so I just go as fine as possible. And we'll apply that to the beam. And we should be ready to run it. This shows the deformed shape of the cantilever. What's really powerful about this now is right-click Results and go Define Beam Diagrams. And we want to make a shear diagram, so we'll go Shear Force in Direction 1. I'm selecting all of the beams, and I'll click OK on that. And it appears nothing happened. And the shear force, if I rotate it about the x-axis, I now see the shear force, but one problem is that it's going in the wrong direction, and the numbers that it's spitting out are in the order of 10 to the minus 8th or 10 to the minus 9th. This isn't what I would expect for the load distribution that we've chosen. Turns out I selected the wrong direction, so I'll right-click here, Edit Definition. I want the shear force actually in direction 2 along my plane of reference, and I'll click OK there go back to the original view, and now here is my shear force diagram. I see things on the order of minus 3 or minus 5 in the negative direction. The shape of this looks, uh, moreover, looks uh, just like the shear diagram that we drew by hand. Sometimes it's easier to see it if I do a, a scale from dark red to black for the uh, magnitude of the shear force. One thing I observe is a shear force of negative 7.5 newtons at the uh, left axis. You could get that uh, by hand by integrating the distributed load over the beam. SOLIDWORKS has appeared to get the direction and the sign right for the convention that we're used to. Negative shear forces across the board. Sometimes I'll see, I'll still see negative shear forces, but the axis will be flipped. It'll appear to be positive up here, and I'm not sure how to change that. But uh, just keep in mind the shear forces over here are the, the signs that you're interested in. Another thing you can do with the shear uh, moment plot selected, right click, go probe, and we'll click this beam go update. This will give you the values, the actual values in newtons across the length of the beam. If you want to, you could go click plot, and it generates a plot window, and it shows the shear force it is a function of parametric distance. So this is 100% across the beam, 50% halfway through, and at the uh, very uh, one side of the beam, it's, it's at zero. But note that what it did, and I'm not entirely sure how to fix it. It said a parametric distance of zero has a shear force of zero. So a parametric distance of zero is the very right-hand side of the beam. Parametric distance of one or 100% all the way across is at the left side. And we see this negative 7.5 for the shear force. And if you want to, you can save it and export it to your favorite graphing software if you want to do it that way. But this is a quick way to get the actual plot. So let's do a bending moment diagram. Right click results. We'll do define beam diagrams. And we'll do a moment in direction one. Remember, I, I keep getting confused direction one or two. So we'll just do direction one and run it on all beams and click OK. And you'll see nothing at first if you selected it right. The z-axis, all the bending moments are into and out of the screen along the z-axis. So I'll use my down arrow to rotate the beam. And here I see my bending moment diagram across it, and the z-axis is acting downward. But note that by our convention, we expect a positive bending moment by our convention. SOLIDWORKS is showing uh, the sign and opposite sign. It did get the magnitude correct. You should get, uh, by hand, you should come up with 18.75 newton meters for the torque at the cantilevered length of the beam. But just keep in mind that the sign convention it uses may be different than what, what you're used to. And also, when I compare the bending moment diagram from SOLIDWORKS to what we would predict by hand, we see a bit of a different shape. But remember that SOLIDWORKS, in this instance, is saying 100% is at the very left-hand side of the beam. So it'll start out at 0%. Here's 100% across at, uh, at x equals 0. And the bending moment shape there is, if you flip this, it'll look identical to what we drew in this instance. Flip it horizontally and vertically, and you'll come up with the same diagram. And if you wanted to, you could make an even uh, more arbitrary distributed load. Here I've got a distance of uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 
and I scroll down four and five meters from the end of the beam. And I just arbitrarily chose uh, zero at the end, and then I went from negative three newtons per meter to positive three, negative three to positive, and back down to negative three. And that would give me the shape shown. If I want to, I can click flip origin, and it will mirror that. It'll start. It'll now start working from this side. And what I don't understand is the red arrows point to the left, but it appears from here that the axis is going to the right. So pay attention to that to make sure that you've gotten your uh, distributed load right. Another thing you can do is make two parts and join them in the middle with another joint, so you could apply another force in that area. And uh, I'll address that in a subsequent screencast.